Chancellor, Your Grace, Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. From 1969 until 1993, Colin Parry was a successful human resource manager. He held a politics degree from University of Wales, Swansea, and was married to Wendy with three children, Dominic, Tim, and Abigail. He'd worked with some large industry players, such as Plessy and Imperial Metals, and was a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development. The family actually moved from Wigan to Warrington in the late 1980s, partly for work-related reasons, partly because their former home was near a busy traffic intersection and they had concerns for the safety of the children, who were eight, six, and five at the time. Since Colin was from Liverpool and a lifelong Everton supporter and Wendy from Manchester, it seemed a good compromise location. At about 12.25 on the 20th of March, 1993, the Irish Republican Army exploded two bombs on Bridge Street in Warrington about 100 yards apart. The blasts happened within a minute of each other. One exploded outside Boots and McDonald's and one outside Argos. The area was crowded with shoppers and the bombs had been placed inside cast iron litter bins causing large amounts of shrapnel. Three-year-old Jonathan Ball died at the scene. Colin's 12-year-old son Tim received the full force of the blast and was gravely wounded. He died on 25th of March 1993 when doctors switched his life support machine off. 56 other people were injured, four of them seriously. One could respond to such a situation in a variety of ways. Colin established a visionary charity, the Tim Parry Jonathan Ball Foundation for Peace in 1995. And three years later, in 1998, he and Wendy met the politician Mo Molum, then Northern Ireland Secretary. By that time, they were lobbying to achieve Wendy's dream of a dedicated peace center, and Ms. Molum got right behind them, arriving a private, uh, arranging a private meeting with Prime Minister Tony Blair during the G8 summit being held in Birmingham. 1.5 million pounds was pledged, and coincidentally, the NSPCC were also hoping to develop a centre and were able to match fund. The centre opened on March 20, 2000, the seventh anniversary of the bombings. The foundation is dedicated to providing conflict resolution programmes and activities that benefit children, young people, adults, schools and communities everywhere. In their own words, the foundation works with people affected by political violence and acts of terror to support them in dealing with their past experiences and using them as the motivation for creating positive change. We work with people of all backgrounds to prevent violent conflict by helping them to develop the skills and understanding to be able to resolve conflict through non-violent means and ways. We provide training and guidance to leaders and managers, including those at government level, on how to deal with past, present, and future conflicts. In parallel, Colin has morphed from HR manager to freelance HR consultant, to leadership development coach, and specialist in career transition. His book, An Ordinary Boy, was published in 1994, and he hosted the television series, An Interview with Colin Parry, in 1996. Rotary International has granted him a Paul Harris Fellowship for significant assistance given in the furtherance of better understanding and friendly relations among people of the world. In 2004, Rotary International awarded him their International Award for World Understanding and Peace, an award that had previously been received by Nelson Mandela, the late Pope John Paul, and former U.S. President Carter. The same year, he received an LBE in the Queen's Birthday Honours List. He has received two Communicator of the Year Awards, the Ross McWhirter Good Citizenship Award. He was shortlisted for the BBC People's Award, won the New York Radio Festival Award for Best News Programme. He has shared a platform with Gerry Adams, the Sinn Féin President in London, and recently invited Martin McGuinness to deliver the annual peace lecture in Warrington. 
He responded to critics by saying that they had failed to, I quote, grasp the founding principles of this organization, which is to be peace builders with the aim of reconciling people. Once you set your stall out in that regard, you don't close the door to certain people and open it to others. It's fitting in the year of the 20th anniversary of those bombings that Colin and Wendy Parry received the first Warrington Inspiration Award at a ceremony last month. As a lifelong Everton supporter, Colin described Tim as blue through and through. Every year there is an Everton celebration known as the Everton Cup Final which is the culmination of a series of competitions for youth, school, and community sides. Each year, the Tim Parry Trophy is awarded to a successful side in front of anywhere between three and 4,000 fans at Goodison Park. This reconciliation of local memory with the international work of the Peace Center in conflict resolution and trauma recovery is an outstanding legacy, which is growing and not diminishing with time. Colin Parry and his family have done much good out of the most dreadful adversity. As the former Prime Minister Tony Blair noted, Colin and Wendy Parry have shown a quite exceptional spirit of forgiveness and determination to promote reconciliation. They can be very proud of the work they've done over the years. It's interesting that the spirit they represent has ultimately triumphed over hatred, discord and conflict. Surely. That should give us hope for the future. Chancellor, Your Grace, in the name of the Senate and of the Council, I present to you for admission to the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa, in this university, Colin Parry. By virtue of the authority invested in me, I admit you to the degree of Doctors of Letters on Oscar Rosa in this university. It now gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Colin Parry to address the congregation. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honour to be in this wonderful city, historic city, and this fabulous uh, cathedral today, and to receive such an accolade from um, a very notable uh, institution such as the University of Chester. Uh, my wife, uh, who's sitting over on my left, uh, and who shuns the limelight, generally, um, is um, the rock, really, that stands behind the family which withstood the loss of our son Tim, who would now be 33 years of age if he was not uh, lost to us. Um, I can only say that as a family, the choice was quite simple. We either were broken by the loss of our son and um, the consequential damage for the rest of the family would have been uh, huge, or we could have uh, taken up a challenge to provide some form of leadership as parents uh, in, uh, in the Northern Ireland problems. Uh, and down the years we've worked tirelessly to try to make an English contribution uh, towards healing the communities in Northern Ireland. 
Uh, and it's pleasing to be able to say that despite the fact that the Northern Ireland peace process is not a perfect peace process by any means, it is a very mature peace process now and most of the time, most of the time, it's a peaceful part of the UK. We've extended the work of our foundation beyond Northern Ireland for those reasons, but also for the reason that in the Britain of today, the biggest threat I think you would accept, like we believe, facing this country is the threat from within, from uh, seriously deranged people who live in this country, who take up a cause often based on a spurious view of their faith and would become suicide bombers and with impunity kill travellers on the London tube trains or London buses. And that is a challenge which the UK government faces routinely. Indeed, most Western governments face those threats. But Western governments can't alone overcome such threats. And that's where a community charity such as ours comes in. And we work with victims of terrorism and we work with young people, your sort of age, who might be otherwise tempted by siren voices of older people to take up, uh, in the name of some god or other, um, armed struggle and visit terrifying consequences on the rest of us. So my foundation and my wife's foundation works tirelessly to prevent that kind of development and to prevent people from becoming radicalised. It's a very serious charity with very serious intent and we're increasingly getting international recognition of which I am very proud and so is my wife. The downside of today is for me wearing red and white robes. <laughs> it's actually very difficult indeed as a lifelong blue from the city of Liverpool, um, I think this is the first time I've ever worn red and white, and probably will be the last, but on this occasion, uh, I accept it in the spirit that it's offered. Um, it's been a wonderful day, the weather's been good, um, tremendous occasion, congratulations to the university for organising it so well, and for our lovely friend here for looking after us, because I didn't know where I was going or what I was doing and she, until she took hold of me, and I'm very grateful for that. So I wish you all well, have a great life, and make peace, make peace, please one of your top priorities, as well as getting a good career. Make peace with everybody. Thank you very much.